Let's have a look at how the implicit Q theorem fits into the QR algorithm. Now remember, we've started by taking our matrix A and making it into a tridiagonal matrix. And now we're iterating with the tridiagonal matrix. And how does each iteration work? Well, we compute the QR factorization of the current uh, matrix, and then we take R times Q and make it into the next matrix. Now, the detail of this is that we actually compute a sequence of Gibbons rotations, which together then represent our Q transpose. And therefore, doing the result of that then is R, and therefore our next iteration really is equal to that matrix R times the individual Gibbons rotations. And that gives us then a k plus 1. Okay, now let's have a look at this. This is our matrix Q if we actually multiplied it all together. Okay, let's have a look at this first Gibbons rotation. Okay, really it's a matrix where you have this little rotation sitting right here and then you have the identity matrix for the rest. Hmm. What happens if we hit that matrix in order to compute our Q, which we're never going to do explicitly, but what if? If we actually try to form Q, then we would have to take our matrix G0 and hit it from the right with the next Gibbons rotation. But remember, that Gibbons rotation, when applied from the right, only affects the second and third column. Importantly, it leaves the first column alone. So you get a bunch of non-zeros here. As a matter of fact, you get a non-zero here, here, and here, typically. Okay. Then you go to the next Gibbons rotation. It affects only the third and fourth column. It again leaves this first column of Q that we're trying to accumulate alone. The point being that our matrix Q, its first column, is completely determined by the first Gibbons rotation that we compute. So, if we actually form this matrix right here, and then through whatever means we can find, figure out a way of applying unitary matrices from the left and equivalently from the right, their transposes, in order to end up with a tridiagonal matrix, then the implicit Q theorem tells us that that's exactly the same tridiagonal matrix that we would have gotten had we actually computed all of the Gibbons rotations and then one by one applied those Gibbons rotations to the resulting matrix R. Okay. And this turns out to be an absolutely crucial and ingenious insight.